by transcription. Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay. And Palm Olive Shave Creams for a smoother, more comfortable way to shave bring you Our Miss Brooks starring Eve Arden. <laughs> comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks, under the direction of Al Lewis. Well, bringing an apple to the teacher is an old custom indeed. But Our Miss Brooks, who teaches English at Madison High School, was quite surprised last Friday morning when Walter Denton handed her a large bouquet of roses as she got into his car to drive to school. Why, Walter, these flowers are lovely, but what's the occasion? You're the occasion, beauteous one. <laughs> the very fact of your presence in my humble conveyance is cause for celebration. And alongside of you, these flowers seem like so many weeds. That's a very pretty speech, Walter, but I still say these are beautiful flowers. Look at these stems, so long and straight. Alongside of yours, they're... I get the idea. <laughs> Now, what's behind this flattering demonstration of affection? Behind it? Oh, what could possibly be behind it but a genuine desire to make my favorite teacher happy? Besides, I don't deserve all your gratitude. Some of these flowers were picked in the backyard of a neighbor of mine, Tex Barton. You mean the boy whose folks recently moved here from Texas? Yeah, that's him. Oh, he's very fond of school, Miss Brooks. I know. The minute the final bell rings, he drags himself off the campus as if he was shot out of a cannon. <laughs> Sometimes I wonder why he doesn't park his horse in the hallway. Well, there's a reason for his rush, Miss Brooks. Texas dad is on the local draft board, and he's helping him check the outgoing mails. That's a switch. In my English class, he checks nothing but the incoming females. <laughs> but uh, let's get back to the flowers, Walter. Your giving them to me was leading up to a favor, wasn't it? A favor? Me? Oh, Miss Brooks, how can you possibly suspect me of such foul tactics? No matter how much you pump me, I'm not going to divulge the dismal fact that last Monday, Mr. Conklin caught me holding hands with Harriet and ordered me to stay for an hour after school for two weeks to take care of such sundry back-breaking and humiliating jobs as sweeping out classrooms, washing windows, and <laughs> emptying waste baskets. I don't know, Mr. Interlocutor. Why should you tell me that Mr. Conklin ordered you to stay for an hour after school for two weeks to take care of such sundry back-breaking and humiliating jobs as sweeping out classrooms, washing windows, and <laughs> emptying waste baskets? Don't you see, that's just my point. It isn't any of your concern, Miss Brooks. This is my problem and mine alone. Why, you'd have to flay me with a horsewhip before I'd ask you to drop into Mr. Conklin's office this morning and ask him to ease up on me? Why, I just couldn't ask you to do that, Miss Brooks. You couldn't? Definitely not. However, if you were sweet enough to volunteer... <laughs> Have a seat, Miss Brooks. I'll be with you as soon as I get this fishing and hunting equipment unpacked. Well, that's quite an assortment, Mr. Conklin. This fishing tackle is the best money can buy. And look at this, Miss Brooks. Isn't this fly rod a beauty? Oh, it's perfect. Anybody that couldn't catch flies with that has no talent. <laughs> <laughs> the reason I came into your office... Presently, Mr. Miss Brooks. Presently. I can hardly wait to try this stuff out at Crystal Lake over the weekend. I'm leaving right after school. $200 worth of sporting goods. And I could never have afforded it without consummating one of my shrewdest transactions this week. Would you like to hear about it, Miss Brooks? Well, frankly, I'll sir. tell you. <laughs> Do you remember the extra car I've had in my garage for lo these many months? The bargain I told you I'd relinquish? You mean the 1928 Hupmobile? The sale. Well, the other day, I found a sucker, a uh, customer. <laughs> That's the car you were going to show me when I was visiting you and Mrs. Conklin one afternoon, isn't it? Uh, yes, yes. Did I show it to you? No, it was too ill to accept visitors that day. <laughs> the hardening of the crankshaft had set in. Well, confidentially, it has no motor, but I neglected to mention that fact to my customer. But what did you tell him? I merely informed him that I had misplaced the ignition key and that he may pick up the car this afternoon. By then, I'll be on my way to Crystal Lake with his check for $200 already in my pocket. 
But, Mr. Conklin, that doesn't sound very ethical to me. All's fair in business, Miss Brooks. Remember that. Now, I'd like to write my customer some sort of a cheer-up message and leave it pinned to the tow rope on the rear axle. <laughs> but before I can write anything, you will have to walk over to the supply room and get me some stationery. I'm all out. Yes, sir, but first, may I say a word in behalf of Walter Denton? If it's a word that accurately describes him, it'll only serve to embarrass the both of us. <laughs> Please, sir. He told me you gave him two weeks' detention for holding hands with your daughter. And you're displeased with my decision in this matter? Mr. Conklin, I don't mean to encroach upon your authority, but all I ask is, does the punishment fit the crime? Perhaps not, but that can be adjusted. Instead of two weeks' detention, I'll give him a month. <laughs> a month? Picking up waste baskets and emptying them into an incinerator? Uh, I'm glad you reminded me. I want Denton to move the incinerator away from the fence. Fence? There's no fence near our incinerator. I'm glad you reminded me. Denton has always struck me as being the sort of boy who could build a first-rate fence. <laughs> but, Mr. Conklin, how can Walter possibly find time to complete all these extra tasks? I see what you mean, Miss Brooks, and I do want to be fair about this matter. I tell you what, instead of a month, I'll extend his detention period to six weeks. Now, uh, get that stationery and hurry back. Please. Oh, but, Mr. Conklin, please. Yes, sir. I'm sorry, Walter, but... Yeah, I know, Miss Brooks. With the transom open, I could hear the entire sickening conversation. <laughs> then you know that I tried. Yeah, my appreciation for your efforts is only exceeded by my gratitude that you came out when you did. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow I got the feeling that if you'd said four more words in my behalf, you'd have had me in the gas chamber. <laughs> Cheer up, Walter. Maybe he'll relent before the six weeks are up. Well, I've got to... Wait a minute. Is there a circus on our campus? A circus? Of course not. Then why is that antelope coming down our hallway? <laughs> it's Tex Barton, Miss Brooks. Hi, Tex. Hi, Walter. Howdy, Miss Brooks. Howdy, stranger. Shucks, ma'am, I ain't no stranger to you. Maybe it's wishful thinking. <laughs> uh, Tex, your pal Walter needs a bit of pepping up. He's pretty low this morning. Shucks, pard, that ain't no way to be. Well, I can't help, I can't help it. <laughs> Miss Brooks tried to get me out of a jam with Mr. Conklin, but it was no dice. Well... Now, if a handsome critter like you couldn't soften the hombre, he must be dead set again, Walter. I forgive my boldness, ma'am, but you're as pretty as a Palomino mare eloping off to the barn when she gets a whiff of new mown hay. <laughs> what can I say, Tex, after I've said... <laughs> Excuse me, kids. I've got to lope over to the supply room and get Mr. Conklin some writing paper. See you in class later on. Yeah, goodbye, Miss Brooks. Adios, me Chiquita. Say, uh, Walter, would you keep these papers in your briefcase for me? I forgot mine. Oh, sure, Tex. <laughs> Say, these are a bunch of blank induction notices, aren't they? Yeah, uh-huh. I, I got to bring them to my pa down to the draft board after school. Hey, wait a minute. I've got an idea. If old Marblehead thinks he's going fishing at Crystal Lake while I do a lot of menial jobs around here, he's got another think coming. Now, where's that pen of mine? Oh, here we are. Walter, what are you going to do? I've already done it. I wrote Mr. Conklin's name on this induction notice. <laughs> <laughs> now, we'll slip it under his door and beat it. <laughs> Stationery you wanted, Mr. Conklin. Oh, what's this on the floor? Some sort of a notice. A notice? Hand it to me, please. Uh, uh Oscar and Conklin, Prince of Office, Madison High School, just for Oh, God! <laughs> what does it say, Mr. Conklin? It says, Greeting. <laughs> No, it is not my birthday. 
these greetings inform me that I have been selected for training and service in the armed forces of the United States. You? <laughs> they must be in quite a hurry to get me. They didn't even mail this thing. They just slipped it under the door. <laughs> and I have to report this afternoon. Well, this is it. <laughs> Don't jump to conclusions, Mr. Conklin. At your age... There they... is no age limit for a good soldier, Miss Brooks. You forget I resigned my commission as a major in 1946. This notice makes it obvious the top brass wants me back. But, sir, if you were a major, why wouldn't they offer you a commission instead of inducting you as a private? Politics. <laughs> Besides, mine not to reason why. Ah, uh, I'll miss my life here at Madison. No more meetings, no more books. No more teachers' dirty looks. <laughs> I still can't believe that our military situation is so desperate that... Well, why should they want a high school? <laughs> they always want efficient men in the armed forces, Miss Brooks. They just figured it's time old Coke and Crackers Conklin was back in harness, that's all. Coke and Crackers Conklin? An affectionate nickname the boys pinned on me for my lengthy tour of duty at the canteen snack bar. <laughs> well, it looks like Eisenhower was right when he inspected our Indian wrestling team at the Elks Club in 1940. At that time, he shook hands with me and said, Conklin, you've got a firm grip, the kind of a grip this country needs. General Eisenhower said that to you? It was Lieutenant Eisenhower <laughs> then, Miss Brooks. Lieutenant in World War II? I'll never forget that man. Lieutenant Stanley Eisenhower. <laughs> oh, I remember him. Good pal of Ensign Sam Nimitz, wasn't he? <laughs> uh, but, Mr. Conklin, if you're going to report to your draft board this afternoon, is, is there anything I can do to assist you at school? Your loyalty touches an old soldier's heart, Miss Brooks. Yes, come to think of it, there's a lot you can do. Firstly, I won't be needing any of this sports equipment. Please try to dispose of it for me. But can't you take it back to the store? Uh, no, no, I bought it at a final sale. Perhaps you could auction it off. I'm sure some of the teachers might be interested, if only for sentimental reasons, in owning something that belonged, however fleetingly, to their departing principal. Well, if the price is cheap enough. I mean... <laughs> we could do is put up a notice on the bulletin board and hold the auction in the gym. But, Mr. Conklin, I don't know very much about auctioning things off, and since this emergency was caused by the armed forces, I'd like your permission to telephone Marshall. Uh, Defense Secretary Marshall? No, Marshall Monaghan. He's a war surplus auctioneer. 